tonight. Hallelujah. Let the Spirit of God fill this place, we pray. lift your hands all over the place and while you're lifting your hands add your voice to it let's make a little noise in this house hey all across this nation it's a Friday night and there's people gathered at football stadiums and they're gonna shout and go crazy over a man carrying a pig's gut across a field how much more should the apostolic church full of young people on a Friday night Lift your voice because God set you free. He delivered you. He's kept you. We ought to be louder than any football arena all across this nation. Lift your voice. Look, I, I know we all look cute and we look pretty and that's all right. But I didn't come to look at anybody in this house. I came to worship the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the author and the finisher of my faith, the lifter of my head, my deliverer, my keeper. God's in this house. 
Jesus. Welcome to Friday night. I'm not doing the welcome, so let me go where I'm going. God wants to do something, I believe, in this conference. The theme of this conference, if you don't mind me, Brother Phillips, just saying this. Testing. Well, all right. The devil is a liar, ain't he? The devil is a liar, ain't he? He ain't going to stop what God wants to do in this house. <laughs> Brother Phillips told me that the theme of the conference was generation to generation, and I immediately knew what scripture I wanted to give to you all tonight. And so it's a familiar scripture. Everyone in this building ought to be able to quote it. It's Acts 2, 38 and verse 39. And then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, but it goes a little further and says, for the promise is unto you and to your children and your children's children and your children's children's children, as many as God shall call. So this week for the next two days, we're, we're not handing the next generation some watered down, messed up doctrine that can't do anything, but we're gonna hand them an Acts 238 church a oneness church, a holiness church. Worship with us tonight. Come on, why don't you worship with us right now? Amen. How many know there's power in the name of Jesus? How many know there's power in the name of Jesus?
worship the God who's all powerful, all knowing, omnipotent. He reigns and rules over all. We love you, Lord. Praise you, the Lord. Let's lift up a praise in this house tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we praise you, Lord. I'm so thankful there's power in the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name, salvation in the name, deliverance in the name, miracles in that name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. Why don't you take just a moment and greet a few folks right there in your neighborhood or across the aisle. If you see somebody you don't know, introduce yourself to them. Amen. Some of you ministry, if you won't, come, and come up here a little closer to the front. Join us. There's plenty of seating up here at the front. Amen. Get acquainted with somebody. Let's get ready to worship God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Some of you preachers, if you want to come on up closer, we got a lot of seating up here close to the front. You're welcome to come on up a little closer. Praise God. I hope y'all wore your shouting shoes tonight. We're going to turn this into a sanctuary. Hallelujah. I think the devil needs a good stomping tonight. What do you think? Come on. What do you think? I think we need to put him in his place tonight. Well, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's all right to go ahead and challenge your deodorant. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There was a preacher invited up to sing one night, and he got up there, and he, he, he came to the podium, he didn't even say anything for a few minutes. He just stood there and he said, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Somebody said, what are you doing? He said, I'm confusing the devil. He don't know what I'm fixing to do. I feel a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. hey, 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 in this house right now. Anybody feel like worshiping the Lord? Come on, you didn't come on a Friday night just to look pretty. You came to give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If it's been a while since you got your shout on, you need to get it on tonight. Dust off the cobwebs, pull it out of the mothballs, and let's have church. What do you say? Give somebody a high five and say, if you're apostolic, you better act like it tonight. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, one generation shall praise the Lord to another, that they may rise up and declare to their children. We make no bones about it. This meeting is about a solid transfer from the old through the middle and all the way down to the young. We don't want to lose one thing, Brother Smith. We want to keep it solid. We want to keep it straight. We want to keep it right. And that's why we're here at this conference is because we want God to move in this house. Hallelujah. And we as apostolics know you're not going to get very far without bringing the blood into the picture. You got to have the blood if you're going to have redemption, if you're going to have salvation. Come on, we're not, we're not one of those churches that's going to do away with the bloody message. We're going to preach the blood. I said we're going to talk about the blood. We're going to rejoice it. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost up here. We're going to talk about it. You might know this old song. It says, the blood 
that Jesus shed for me. It was where
cross. He didn't have to shed his blood, but he did. He didn't have to die, but he did. And he did it with you on his mind. You ought to give him praise right now. Can we shout unto the Lord tonight with a voice of triumph? Can we lift our hands and magnify him all over this building tonight? Hallelujah. What a great move of God already happening in this house tonight. Hallelujah. The Bible says when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were in one place in one accord and suddenly, suddenly there came a sound from heaven. When I began to study about what was happening in that upper room, somewhere between seven and ten days they were in there. Somewhere between seven and ten days they were trying to get it all together. Somewhere in between seven and ten days, amen, they realized that we're all in this thing together. And when they got it together, there was something happened. The Bible just said, and suddenly, and suddenly, uh-huh, and suddenly, I just wonder what would happen tonight. Amen. If we got it all together and realize we're in this place, we're all in this thing together. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And it set upon each of them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's time to have revival in Missouri. Praise God. Amen. It's so good to be here tonight. Amen. To feel the presence of the Holy Ghost in this place. Appreciate Brother Phillips and all the powers that be that put this thing together. So needful. So needful. We're so, certainly thankful to be here. We want to receive an offering tonight to take care of the expenses of this meeting. If you'll help us give tonight, we'll just lift your hand to the Lord if you'll help us give something. Amen. We want to give the Lord Glory, I don't, I don't want to come into this house and not offer God anything. Amen. I want to give God. Amen. Give back to the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Can we pray together tonight? Lord, we love you. We thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for your spirit in this place already. God, we come. Amen. You said as a man purposeth in his heart, so let him give. God, we're believing you tonight, God. Uh, Lord, to bless those that give in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. Amen. If our ushers could come, amen, let's receive an offering tonight. Amen. Let's worship the Lord as we give this offering.
hearts are raised. All glory and honor and praise. Let us shout aloud the victorious name. All glory and honor and praise. To the King of kings and Lord of lords. All glory and honor and praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give you glory. out of your seat and go ahead and give God some praise. He's worthy of all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. So we sing hallelujah, 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 we praise your name, hallelujah, 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 we pray, hallelujah, Hallelujah. Honor. Hallelujah. Power. We praise your name. We praise your name. Hallelujah. Our honor. honor. Hallelujah. Our power. power. We praise. We praise your name. Come on, give a praise right now. We can take a second. We can take a second. Come on, it's an order. You ought to give him praise. You ought to give him praise. I can't tell you that I know shot. Hallelujah! 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 We praise your name! Hallelujah! 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 We praise your name! Hallelujah! 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 We praise your name! Hallelujah! Somebody shout a great big hallelujah in this place. If you know that he deserves your praise and worship, no matter the circumstance, no matter the situation, I lift my voice and say hallelujah anyhow. You're worthy anyway. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, let's worship God in this place. Praise the Lord. I think somebody's just about get loose in the Holy Ghost here. You know, this is one of those nights where you say, 
if they just sang that song one more time. Well, you know what? I think I'm going to have them sing another line of it. And the rest of you, get, just get out there in the aisle and join us a little bit. It's time to give all glory and honor and power unto our God. Hallelujah, in Jesus' name. house tonight let's make it ring in here somebody give God a shout of praise hallelujah praise the name of the Lord Woo! thank you Jesus thank you Jesus amen there has been a lot of prayer and fasting that has went on in the last several weeks and months for this meeting. There has been a lot of sacrifice many of you have made. You've driven long distances. There's been so much work behind the scenes. And I am thankful. I know God is going to reward every effort that's been made to be in this place tonight. We have come together as one God, Jesus' name, apostolic people, to glorify our God to just serve notice on the devil. Hey, we haven't went anywhere yet. We're still here. We're still ready to have revival. We're still having a move of the Holy Ghost in Missouri. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, I feel it in this house tonight. Oh, come on, you ought to just go ahead and get your blessing right now. I'm going to tell you something. If we, I'm not half as worried about the contagion of the virus as I am the contagion of the Holy Ghost. I'm hoping somebody will catch the Holy Ghost tonight and get it from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. I hope you walk out of here with the power of God surging in your life. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. I'm going to let you return to your seats for a moment if you can. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Man, I see so many of our good friends here tonight. Praise God. I was dancing over here in the altar area just a moment ago, and I felt a hand on my shoulder, and it was my buddy that... Uh, his dad owns the company where we rented all this stage equipment and we've rented tools for them for years. And uh, Eric's in the house. God bless Eric. I'm so thankful he's here tonight. Amen. God bless him. They are so good to us, to our church. This facility has just been great. They have opened their arms to us. This, this whole place was just completed a few months ago. State of the art. Uh, complex with everything you need right here. It's all under one roof. We'll have our church services. We'll have our food. We'll have our recreation. And we don't even have to go anywhere. So uh, thank God. God just made a way. Praise God. Anybody excited about Regeneration 2021? 
Amen. And we are so thankful to all of the churches and pastors. In fact, I would like for all of our pastors to stand. And I want all ministry, if you're in the local church, come on, pastors. I see you. Come on, stand up. And uh, ministry in the local church, uh, evangelists, whatever, missionaries, whatever. I want you to stand tonight. We want to recognize these men of God. We appreciate their their labors and their efforts. That's it. Let's give them a hand. Praise God. I'm going to have Brother Damien come around. I want you just to tell us your name, where you're from. Xavier White, uh, North Little Rock, Arkansas, Brother Holmes. All right. Praise God. Just keep standing. Linton Lovelock, um, St. Louis, Missouri. All right. Praise God. John Hellman, Word of Life Apostolic Church, Florissant, Missouri. All right. Praise God. Kerwin Roach, St. Louis, Missouri, Fresh Anointing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. John Wilson, Truth Tabernacle, Granite City, Illinois. All right. Awesome. Glad to have you, brother. Brother Smith, Waynesville, Missouri. Praise the Lord. Terry Mays, Evangelist. All right. Praise God. Trey Elliott, the greater metropolitan of Diggins. All right. Praise God. Curtis Owens, Jefferson City, Missouri. Yes, sir. I got another friend standing back here. Pastor B.G. Washington, the Church of God in Christ here in Fulton, Missouri. Yes, sir. Glad to have you, brother. God bless you. Let's give these ministers another big hand. Praise God. Don't you appreciate men of God? Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. We are so thankful for all of them, the labors that they are making in their respective places and cities and, and the work of God that's going forward. I want to say a big thank you. This, this band and this uh, corral is doing an awesome job tonight. Man, they have worked. They have worked tirelessly, and we are so, let's give them a good hand. We appreciate them tonight doing an awesome job. Amen. Amen. I want Brother uh, Pastor Grimes to come and greet you tonight. This is one of our churches in our fellowship, and these folks have given and sacrificed so much for this meeting to make this happen. We love and appreciate them with all of our heart, and I want Pastor Grimes to come and greet you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Phillips. Amen. So good to be in the house of God tonight. What a wonderful feeling we are feeling here today. And can you say amen? Yeah, praise God. Amen. I'm thankful for good men and women of God that stand for the truth. And I mean that in ministry and in saints as well. Praise God. Somebody's got to believe it besides the ministry. Amen. We've got to have some saints that's going to listen to it, receive it, and believe it. Well, praise the Lord. I just couldn't help, but it uh, seems like the Holy Ghost has got us all on the same track here. Acts chapter 2, verse number 42 has been resonating in my spirit the last several weeks. You can ask the folks at our church. The scripture says, and they that gladly received the word were baptized, and the same day were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And one of my favorite scriptures in the word of God, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in breaking of bread and in prayers. Amen. I remember as a new convert underlining that scripture in my Bible. And guess what? It's still underlined to this day. Amen. Because there's a generation, I'm telling you, that's hungry for this message. I believe if men will stand up and preach and stand for the word of God, Hallelujah. If we'll disseminate it down to our children, our children, I believe they're looking to receive it. Come on. If we'll not water it down, if we'll stand for holiness and righteousness and separation and godliness in an ungodly world, and we'll continue, continue, continue steadfastly, the Apostles' Doctrine, that's a broad term, man. That covers a lot. Paul wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. 
And I'm telling you, when a lot of Pentecostal churches, it seems to be ashamed of a lot of his writings, I say amen to every single one of them. I'm not ashamed of them. And that's what's changed my life. When this gospel got a hold of me 20 years ago and pulled me out of the bar rooms and out of the drug houses, I'm telling you, and God set my feet up on solid ground. Who am I to be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the doctrine? Hallelujah. But if we as men and women will preach it, if we'll stand for it in our homes, if moms and dads will stand for this blessed apostolic truth, it'll be transferred down just like it needs to be. But if we water it down, bless God, it's going to be watered down. But I believe our kids are looking to us in the spirit saying, Dad, keep on standing for truth. Mama, keep on standing for truth. I believe the saints are saying to us, Pastor, keep on preaching. Amen. The gun barrel truth to us. Hallelujah. And that's what this doctrine, amen, that's what this conference is all about. I love this blessed one God, apostolic Jesus name, tongue talking, Holy Ghost message. Amen. Ah, there was a man that died. He bled and died on Calvary for it. Hallelujah. And who were, who were we in 2021 to negate it? Amen. But that's what this conference is for. It's to bring us together, to remind us of where we came from, where we're at, and where we're going. Praise the Lord. And I say we just continue on. What do you say? Hallelujah. Let's continue on. Thank you, Pastor Grimes. God bless you. You can be seated. I want to make just a few quick announcements and then we're going to get out of the way here. Don't forget service tomorrow back here at 12 o'clock. And if you want to come early and pray, seek the Lord, that would be great. We'll be wel You'll be welcome to be here. After service tonight, there will be food trucks out here in the parking area. You'll just go right out these doors. There's uh, Tacos and Tequila, which is the Mexican restaurant here in town. They will have a food truck out there. And, uh, and then Brother Sidney from our local church has his uh, snack shack out there as well. And then we're, we'll be bringing the food back in here after uh, around 9 p.m. or so. The facility will close to the public and we'll have the whole facility uh, to ourselves till 1 in the morning. Praise God. So they, they, there's everything we got back here. There's a big arena with basketball courts. There's a turf field directly behind us. You can play soccer or football or whatever you feel like doing. Amen. Or if you just want to play, you know, the, the older generation sport, just sit around and talk a little bit. That's a, that's a hard game to play. Praise God. <laughs> My buddy back there is waving his hand at me. Amen. But the entire facility, just have fun. Also, I want to make mention, Wilson University has a booth in the back. and Yeah. Praise God. Awesome. Stop by and see them. Get some stuff from them. And also, they are, uh, they've got applications, I believe he said, till Thanksgiving. So, man, if you're thinking about getting involved in that, and you ought to be, that's the people to talk to right back there. Praise God. And we are so honored tonight. We're going to talk more about this in a little bit. But we have the president of Wilson University is going to be bringing the word of the Lord to us tonight. Is that awesome or what? Praise God. Hallelujah. I can't think of anybody I'd rather have. Praise God. Amen. But mainly, we just want you to relax and have a good time, fellowship, take time. And, and as I've been saying a lot to our local church here lately, what are you saving yourself for? Don't wait on another date. What are you saving yourself for? You might as well get it all in right here, right now. Praise God. Hey, if the Lord comes this weekend, I want to make this as good as I can make it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. A couple, a couple other guys that we didn't get to recognize a while ago, uh, they were busy and working hard. But over here on the keyboards, Brother Colby White is an evangelist. He's a great man of God. We appreciate and love him. Brother Jordan Coleman, who's leading the, cho the choir, is a mighty man of God. We love and appreciate him. Brother Michael Nix from Texas. Praise God, another man of God, we appreciate. Let's give these young men a hand. 
Hey, that's part of that regeneration. Come on, all. Taking the message on down the road. Praise God. We love and appreciate them, and they're coming back to sing. Let's worship God with them one more time. Come on, why don't we stand all over this place and lift our hands right now and just begin to worship the Lord. We love you, Jesus. Come on, we serve a great God.
all over the house right now. Our strong tower. Never lost the battle. He's never lost the battle. He's never alone. He's never lost the battle. You are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you won. I am who you say. Sing it with us, say. Our strong tower has never lost a battle. He's never lost a battle. He's never lost a battle. He's never lost a battle. Come on, right now, why don't you lift your hands all over this place and begin to talk to God. Come on, that might have been the first time you've heard that song, but I'm telling you, that song's powerful. That song talks about Jesus, our champion, the one that giants fall when he begins to move into the room. The one that demons flee when he begins to walk into the room. Come on, what would you do if God walked into this room and all you had to do was get his attention? How, how loud would you cry out if God was going to grant your need, but all you had to do was get his attention? Would you worry about what your neighbor was saying? Would you worry about what you were wearing? Would you worry about what anybody else was doing? Come on, the preached word of God is about to come forth. But we ought to prepare our hearts right now for the God who's able to meet our needs, the God who's able to answer our prayers. Why don't you lift your hands one more time? Lift your hands all over this place one more time and begin to talk to God in this place. Come on, the Spirit of the Lord is moving here right now. Hallelujah. Let's reach out to the Lord in Jesus' name. If you've got a need in your spirit, why don't you just reach up to the Lord right now and let the Spirit of God minister to your need, your situation. Oh, there's a sovereign move of His Spirit here in this house. Broken hearts can be mended. Emotions can be healed. Pain can be alleviated. Come on, in Jesus' name, God can minister right now in this place. Lift your hands with me one more time. Let's cry out to the Lord in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He is our champion. He is our defender. He's never lost a battle, and he never will. He can move in your situation tonight. Why not let this be the service where God turns it around, where God changes everything, where you walk out of here in faith saying, I know God's going to take care of it for me. Come on, there's healing in this house tonight. There's renewing in this house tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to just say this before we go on to the word of the Lord tonight. If you feel the urgency of the Lord pushing on your heart tonight, you don't even have to wait for an altar call. You move when the Spirit moves you. 
If you need something from God, you don't need to wait on it. You need to get what you need from the Lord. Amen. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you've been through. Amen. It doesn't matter where you've been or where you're at right now. All that matters is where God is trying to take you from this night forward. Amen. We still believe that the Holy Ghost can interrupt the service anytime he wants to. Amen. We don't have to follow no certain protocol. If there's somebody that's hurting, that needs to be healed, that needs to be restored, we've got time for that to happen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want my son to come just briefly. We have, I'm telling you, I'm so proud of him. He has worked so hard to get this together. I want him to say a word to you tonight. God bless Brother Caleb Phillips. Amen. Come and greet us. Praise the Lord, Regeneration. We want to say to the bottom of our hearts, we're so delighted to be worshiping God together with you. One of my heroes is getting, bringing the word tonight, and I do not want to take any of his time. But I do want to tell you, it was at the end of last year, I had a burden on my heart to name, give our youth and young adults a name that would be, they would be proud of and they would press forward. And I had battled, battled over a name. You might think that's crazy, but I was just battling because I couldn't arrive at anything. And I could show you in our sanctuary tonight where the Lord dropped it in my heart that we would be called the generation. And as, if, as those of you that are in the youth group, young adults, you know, it comes from Psalms 24 and 6. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob, Selah. And as a youth pastor, young adult pastor, I, I felt that that just really spoke to us in this generation. But as God enabled us and pastors set the vision for us to move forward this conference, God began to deal with that scripture on me in a, in a little different way. Because although as a youth pastor, I feel it's, it's time for our young people to arise. And then this is the generation. The beauty of that scripture is that when you read that scripture and you make it personal, I don't care if you're nine or 90 under the sound of my voice, but this, you are speaking my generation. This is the generation of them that seek him. And, and unlike, unlike the world that has a champion, you know, back a few decades ago, I've heard my parents, grandparents talk. It seemed like there was legends that lasted decades. We live in a fast world now. You, you might be at the top of the charts for a week if you're lucky. You might hit it big for a month if you're lucky. But in this kingdom, we don't operate on earthly terms. And so when the dear old, dear elderly sisters back here in the back say this is the generation, it's the champion that came, was before they came, and it's the same champion that my youth group is reaching up to. He's not fading off the scene. He's not going out of business. That's why we get our regeneration from generation to generation. I wonder if there's any believers in the house that know all your life God's been faithful. And every time you've reached out for your champion, he's came through. And not because we're in the youth group or because we're in the elderly group or we're in the middle aged group, but every generation declares his praises from one generation to another. And I came to tell somebody, you're a part of whatever generation you're a part of tonight. You're a part of the generation that seeks him. You have the same champion. My dad's champion didn't fade off the scene. I have the same champion. My grandpa has the same champion. My sons and daughters will have the same champion. We ought to sing this one more time before the Dr. Blash comes tonight and say, this is my champion. Can you do that? It's not just the youth group. It's everybody. You are my champion. If you've got a battle, if you've got a mountain, if you've got a sin, if you've got a sickness, he's your champion. He's going to conquer in this place tonight if you'll just surrender to the champion. Will you do that right now?
your hands and begin to talk to that champion. We love you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. We have come to the part of the service we have all been praying and anticipating for. And in just a moment, I'm going to ask you to stretch your hands out towards this place, towards Pastor Blash, and I want you to connect in the spirit. I believe this has been a moment ordained by the Lord. There's been too many things that have shown the fingerprints of God upon this moment. And I'm telling you, I feel so confident. I feel so at peace with the man who's coming to preach to us the word of the Lord tonight. There's many things I could say. He's, he's a doctor. He's a counselor. He's a pastor. He's a father. He's a mighty man of God. And more importantly than all that, he's a Christian. A real, bona fide, genuine Christian. Amen. It's, it's amazing, and, and I wish I had the time to just tell you, but I'll just say quickly, years ago, it's been many years ago, we were connected when we were both younger men and uh, did a lot of youth work and things together, and then fast forward about 25 years or so, and there was a young man named Joshua who happened to be his son and a young man named Caleb who happened to be my son. Seems like I've heard those names connected before somewhere. And uh, they, they got hooked up, not even realizing that their dads had known each other and worked together before in ministry. And God just began to shape all that. And then he brought Pastor Grimes into the mix with us. And our churches have melded together. And now these other brethren are coming into fellowship with us. And we appreciate that. But God has ordained this moment. God has appointed this time. And this man, I know he has heard from God. I want us to open up our hearts to the Lord tonight. If you would, just stretch your hands out up towards Brother Blatch right now. Let's pray and connect in the spirit that God will anoint him and us to receive, to hear what thus saith the word of the Lord. Praise God. embarrassing if I fell off this thing. So I kindly asked them to move me into a safe space and they did that. It was super nice. I don't think I've ever stood at the podium with a hat on before, but I, I feel obligated to represent a little bit tonight. All the cool kids have one of these. All the cool kids have one. Brother Caleb, I need you to just be impromptu with me right now. Scream out. What are these actually, how much we charge for these things? $25. Listen, this is a conference, and I'm the president. We're putting these babies on sale tonight for $24.99. go debate with him. He'll work that out. You know, um, a bunch of years ago, it was, it was quite intimidating to preach in a place with so many preachers. Um, and and that's, it's less true today. It's not. It's not because I'm a better preacher. It's because I don't care what you think um, and 20 plus years ago I, I did um, but I, I care I care desperately what God thinks um, I, I want to ask just one question when I'm done here tonight just one question God did I do what you told me to do if the answer is yes then glory hallelujah all should be well. Somebody said amen to that. Amen. If the answer is no, I've got to spend more time at the altar and, and work that out. 
uh, because we are too close to the coming of the Lord um, to not take this seriously and to not yield yourself to God fully. I, I can tell you that the ministry yielding um, themselves fully to the Spirit of the Lord during the preaching is really only a part of what has to happen for there to be a, a fluid move of the Spirit. It must also be that you allow yourself to be moved upon by the Lord freely. And then there is what I like to call a two-way anointing. And it just goes. And I don't have any clue, I guessed, for the sake of the musicians, I don't have any clue where this message is going to go. I haven't crafted it like that. I, I, can, I can predict the first five minutes because I have crafted those and that might even change. But when there's a flow of the Holy Ghost that's moving, it, it, it takes us where it wants us to be and where we need to be. It, it, so, so we may end up just all shouting and, and just having a good time and, and, and people around here wonder what in the world is going on. Or it, it might be a hush that brings us into a moment of sobriety that changes our churches. I, I don't know what God is going to do, but I know he is going to move. And so um, to our hosts, uh, the, the Phillips and all those who've played a part in making this happen behind the scenes, um, including the, the, the folks on the guitars over here and the drums, I think you may have gotten missed in that um, sort of intro. But to all of you, all of you really, um, bless you for doing all of this. And uh, we have been praying and supporting this from a distance. And this was not just because I'm here, rather I was speaking or not, I was going to be here. Um, as a matter of fact, I got a little flack for being here. So I need you to help me out with something. I need everybody just to repeat after me. He is resting. He is resting. My mother, y'all. <laughs> She's probably listening, so I, pray to, I won't channel her exactly. You need to be resting more. It was something like that. It was like, so would you all help me out in case she's listening? Just say it. He is resting-ish. Ish. Ish. I'm resting in the Lord. Bless you, pastors, you ministers. Um, tremendous amount of respect for you. As a matter of fact, I respect you so much that I am positive what I'm going to preach. You've heard, you've preached, you've taught so many times that I will not spend more than about 40 minutes preaching it. So you don't have to listen to something that you've already preached or taught or, or whatever. But would you just pretend so everybody else around you is engaged, but I, I won't stay long. I won't, I do my best not to bore you. Um, I'll do my best not to offend you, but... Um, if I'm going to bore or offend, it's probably offend. So forgive me already up front. Um, he, here's the deal. Pastor, you, miss, you mentioned this, and, and that is we may not have another service. And um, we, we, we talk a good talk. We do. We talk about the coming of the Lord. But if you were to just sit back and watch how we behave we send a very different signal. Our mouth says we, we think he could come back any moment. Our behavior sometimes says, well, we got a lot of time, a lot of time. You know, I, I know if you're like me, you've prayed, God, when you come back, come back in one of our church services. I want to be at my home church when this happens. I want to be there to see folks, you know, rise up. I want to, you know, I want to be there to be a part in my home church and not at a conference, but I can't dictate that. And so if the Lord chooses to come back now, the question that you've got to ask tonight is, did you give it everything? Leave it all on the mat. Either, either leave it all on the mat or stop telling people you leave it all on the mat. Either give it everything you've got or stop telling people you give it everything you've got. Either really live for him or stop telling people you really live for him. Just tell them the truth. Sometimes I live for him, sometimes I don't. I have more respect for that than the other. So I'm just saying, either be apostolic or stop talking like you're apostolic. And so I believe that he could come back tonight. And so I want to behave like that. With everything in me, I want to be ready. I want to be rapture ready. My heart needs to be right. My attitude needs to be right. 
I got to be pure in spirit. I got to believe in holiness and actually live it. It's, these, these aren't themes. These aren't fads. This is life. And this is how we live. And so I want to share the word of the Lord. I'm so excited I got my wife here with me tonight. She is, um, I was filling out some paperwork with someone the other day, and, and they asked me about my wife's name. I said, well, she's my first wife, and they just looked at me funny. And, and, and you know, well, she still has your last name. Oh, no, she's my first and only. <laughs> so let's clear this up. Yeah. She, she's Alpha. That's it. Ain't no Omega. <laughs> I'm glad she's with me. And then I have two sons, and as far as I know, two son-in-laws. Um, unless something going on in Georgia that I don't know about. I've never had a chance to minister together with any of them. This is particularly special um, to be able to do this. Um, I, I, I want to spend some time tonight in the book of 1 Kings, and the Lord has spoken to me about this time that we have together. However, um, as I was in the process of worshiping him, the Lord began to talk to me, and he just gave me a scripture. And I, I don't want to elaborate a whole lot, but um, you need to hear this scripture. And the truth of the matter is, for 90% um, of you, this scripture will feel good, but it, it won't mean anything special. Other than it's in the word and you love the word. It, it just, but there's a, another group in this building and it's going to mean something for you that will be special more than the last time you read it. It's the book of Micah chapter 7, verse number 7. Um, through verse number 8. Verse number 7 almost never gets attention, but it says this, Therefore I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. You see, that, that verse has to be read in my mind if the next verse is going to make any sense. It's, it's predicated on this, this thing that I was waiting on God, and I'm trusting in God. He's my salvation. He will hear me. And if I were to pencil in something, I would pencil in between verse number 7 7 and verse number 8, something like this, and therefore rejoice not against me, O my enemy, for this says, when I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. I just want to tell somebody just very briefly that you're not your biggest mistake. You're not the mistake you made yesterday. You're not your worst moment. Don't let the enemy pigeonhole you into a place like that. As a matter of fact, when the enemy comes against you like that, just begin to say to the enemy, I will look unto the Lord, the Lord, I will look unto him. I will wait on the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. My God will hear me over your taunting. He'll hear me over your accusations. My God will hear me despite the sin I have. As a matter of fact, my God worked it out that where sin does abound, grace does much more abound. No matter how bad I get, I've always got room to repent. And if I repent, my God is just, he is merciful. He will come to my rescue. Therefore, rejoice not against me, O oh my enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. If I had time, I would preach the entire service just on that note, and I don't have time. I'm going to read a lot of scriptures and actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to read and I'm going to preach and I'm going to read and I'm going to preach and I'm just going to spend time with you so to save the normal kind of when do we pray let's just pray now would you and here's the prayer I want you to pray you already prayed for me <laughs> thank you <laughs> do that daily please now I want you to pray for you God let my ears be open for the word. Let my heart be open for the word. God, 
Don't let me be that person who's been around Pentecost so long that I just scrutinize every little thing and can't absorb anything. Let me be open, God, I pray. God, don't let me be so judgy that I sit here looking around and, and just have nothing, God, in my mind that's good or just or lovely, God. Don't let that happen to me. Instead, God, focus me on your word. Let me find some morsel of goodness. Let me find some nourishment. Let me find something in the word that will help me better serve you, God. Lord, if you decide to come back tonight, I pray that this word would make me more ready than I was when I walked in the building. I pray in the name name of Jesus Christ for revival, God. Lord, give it to me, God, greater than you ever have. And let this night, God, let this night set the stage for a mighty move of the Holy Ghost. Change me deeply, God. Change me deeply, God. I pray these things in the glorious name of Jesus. And somebody said amen. You can be seated. I believe there comes a time in your life, and this is in reference to 1 Kings, where we're going to spend all of our time, 1 Kings chapter 18. You can already get there if you want to. But I believe there comes a time in your life where you have to pick sides. I know it's dangerous. I really do. I've been in scenarios where people have tried to force me to pick sides, and I knew the best thing to do was to stay out of the politics of all of that. Somebody who knows what I'm talking about, say amen. amen. So I'm not talking about churchy stuff. I'm not talking about religion and picking sides. I'm not talking about the initials behind your affiliation or any of that stuff. But there comes a time in your life where you really have to pick sides and decide who you're going to serve. The challenge that I want to present to you tonight is that many of us have gotten away with having a foot in the world and a foot in the church. But I'm telling you, that won't last. That cannot last. You won't make it in the last days. I realize that if you give yourself totally to God, it's going to make you the uncool kid. I'm telling you, you better go ahead and pick and decide now. I'd rather be dispopular or unpopular in this world and know that I have the favor of God any day, any time, anywhere. I love it that we said I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. My God in heaven, if he saved you, but then you put your head down and walk away like you're ashamed of him, something is wrong with your religion. Something is wrong with your doctrine. When he touched me, he did such a great job that it doesn't matter one bit who comes and tells me, you ought not be so radical. Are you kidding? I'm not near as radical as I need to be. Pick a side, pick a side, pick a side. If you are unfortunate enough, please be seated, to have people in your life that you can't discern if they are friend or foe. Because sometimes they behave like a friend and they watch your back. And sometimes they behave like a foe and they stab you in the back then you know that those kinds of relationships are exhausting. You just never know what to expect and you always have to be on guard. It's like living with an alcoholic parent who plays Jekyll and Hyde. You never know which person you might encounter and so you're always on alert. That's tiring to be in that scenario. You would much, if, listen, if you're going to be my friend, go ahead and love on me. If you're going to be my enemy, go ahead and be a hater. But I'd rather have you love on me or be a hater than me not know where you stand. Can I just tell you plain, if you wonder where I stand about you, just ask me. You may not like the answer, but at least you'll know where I stand. Pick a side already. Pick a side already. When the Lord comes back, don't be deciding. It's too late. Are you going to pray before service? And get involved in pre-service prayer? Or are you going to stand around catching up with your friends 
in the back part of the service or in the parking lot and talk about the latest movies put out by an industry that wants to pervert your morality. I tell you what, I've got to, I don't want to offend anybody, but I'm telling you, it bothers me when I walk by and I hear you talking about what Hollywood is doing and not what the Bible is doing. And if I could be even more direct than that, I wonder about some of you adults who tell your children that stuff. You better pick a side. You better pick a side. You can't love them both for very long without there being serious consequences. Don't, oh, I better not. You can't complain about the foul language coming out of your baby's mouth when you pay for the entertainment coming into your house. They don't have jobs. They can't pay for cable. They don't got any money. They can't buy those clothes that make them look half-dressed. You're doing that. You better pick a side, mama. You better pick a side, daddy. You need to go ahead and make a commitment to only listening to godly music. Instead of letting that other stuff slide into your playlist. Filled with all kinds of things that undermine the word of the Lord. Oh, God in heaven, I'm just getting started. Can you just, just let me, is it, are we okay? I mean, if you, if you want to bump and grind to the nasty stuff, go ahead and do it. But don't call yourself one of his at the same time. I mean, would you go ahead and commit to coming to church every time the doors are open? Don't be hit and miss, hit and miss. You know what happens? You think, well, when I have more responsibility and there are more people watching me, I'll become faithful. Can I tell you the new converts have been watching you for a long time and you haven't become faithful yet? Pick a side, pick a side, pick a side. Draw the line in the sand and let everything else settle however it will settle. So I'm going to quote Ty Tribbett. I said I don't like him much either, but I'm going to quote him. He said, it's about to go down. The battle has begun. Some of you hipsters ones are already beating your feet. It's time for you to choose which side you're going to be on. The devil is recruiting, tempting every man, but he's already defeated. All we have to do is stand. There's no time for mixing light with darkness. Somebody said amen, even if you don't like him. You be black or you be white. I'm going to add you be in or be out. No shades of gray. Get out of the middle. I put that in. Be separated. Be holy. No matter what you do, don't bow to this world. Don't bow to this world. If you got to stand all by yourself at high school, you stand all by yourself. I got the baptism when I was in high school, and I was on every sports team I can play. I was a wrestler, and man, if you could see what wrestlers wore, I didn't know any better. I didn't know any better, and so I did it. But then I got the baptism of the Holy Ghost, up, and I didn't, still didn't know everything, but I knew that I needed to be a praying person. And so I went out there with my little skimpy tights on. I kneeled down, and I began to pray, and I made every single one of them uh, wait on me. You may be judging me right now, going, why were you in sports? I didn't know any better. But I knew I needed to pray. I didn't know I shouldn't be dressed like that. So I did. But I knew I needed to pray. And so I did. I was picking a side. I didn't get it all right right away. But eventually over time, I learned. Now, if Ty Tribbett, you can be seen as too urban for you. Let me quote Rascal Flats. Fast cars and freedom. Staring at you, taking off your makeup. I didn't write it. That's probably not even what he meant, but that's all right. Wondering why you even put it on. 
I know you think you need it, baby, but you really don't need it. Wish that you could see what I could see when it's gone. I'm just trying to tell you, pick a side already. You do what you want to, but as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I'm going to feel happy if you choose to serve him with me. I'm going to rejoice if you serve him with me. I'm going to love God if you serve him with me, but I'm going to serve him if you don't. I feel the Holy Ghost, and in him I feel rest. I'm resting. Somebody say he's resting. resting. All right, he can be seated. I was sitting in classes. This was year number, this was about year number 12 or 13 of college. And everybody is smart. Really, they are. All of them are smart. There's nothing more humbling to get into a group of people and you're like, well, I can do this because I've always been at the top of my class. They're like, oh, me too, me too, me too, me too. I'm like, oh, well, (laughs) there you go. (laughs) There's that. And uh, we all get to talk about who we are. And it comes my turn and several times I mention my faith. I mention my beliefs. And one man who did not mean any harm, he was not insulting me, he was not trying to do anything to me or say anything negative. He just looked at me and he said, man, I am, I am almost jealous of the fact that you believe in such simplistic things. He said, I wish I had something that I could just simply believe And I thought, well, man, I've been believing this. I was believing this before I started school. I started believing this stuff in high school. College ain't going to take it away. What am I trying to tell you? You go ahead and go to them secular universes if you want to, but when you're there, you better pick a side. Shameless commercial. If you came to Wilson University, you wouldn't have to worry about that. Your instructors are apostolic. They already picked a side. All right. No more time for commercials. First Kings chapter 18 is predicated upon 1 Kings chapter 17, and look at somebody and say, that was deep. deep. Yeah, I know. (laughs) Me too. I was like, whoa. But what I really mean by that is Elijah had just come off of a mighty miracle. He was not shaken in his faith. There were times where he was shaken in his faith. This was not one of them. He had a Holy Ghost confident in God, confidence in God that was in this moment in time without question. The great miracle of chapter 17 propelled him to some degree into what was going to be a showdown In chapter 18, I say to some degree because the first uh, verse, this is 1 Kings 18 and 1 says, it came to pass after many days. There was a time, a stretch of time from 17 to 18 in terms of God communicating with Elijah. The Bible said that at this point, verse number 1, the Lord instructs Elijah to go and to show himself to Ahab. And I want you to understand that Elijah does exactly that. He does not hesitate. He, he, he really is running into danger. 
he is running into a, a blaze of fire because Ahab wanted him dead and he wanted him dead dead as soon as possible. So now the Lord is saying, I want you to go and I want you to speak to Ahab and the interesting thing is what I want you to tell him is that rain is coming. Now there are so many different things jammed into what I just said. You could write multiple dissertations on any of it. So why is God sending the man of God into harm's way to give really what will be good news? Verse number two says Elijah did exactly that. And this was going to be great news because there was a famine and the famine was connected to a drought. And of course the answer to a drought would be water. And the drought was so bad that Ahab had um, divided his, his livestock. He took part of the livestock, verse number three, and he gave the other part uh, in the charge of Obadiah. Um, Obadiah was a man that feared the Lord. As a matter of fact, when that evil witch Jezebel was killing all the prophets, um, uh, uh, Obadiah put his own life on the line and he hid 100 of them. He hid 50 in one cave and 50 in another cave, the Bible says, and then he began to feed them and give them water, verse number four. So Ahab says to um, Obadiah, I want you to go and, and divide up and go and see if maybe you can find something to eat for these uh, animals so that we don't lose them all. And now Obadiah is on his way to uh, do exactly what he promised and what he was instructed to do. And on the way, he meets Elijah. Now, this has to be a very interesting meeting because Obadiah's boss wants Elijah dead. Obadiah fears God and therefore has protected the prophets. Can you see the, the quandary this man might have been in in that moment in time? What do I do? As a matter of fact, just laying eyes on Elijah was pretty much a death sentence to this man of God, this man who feared God. He said as much. Obadiah sees Elijah and he meets him and he falls on his face in reverence. He says, is that you, Elijah? Elijah says, it's me. Take a look at verse number nine. He said, what have I sinned that thou wouldst deliver thy servant into the hand of Ahab to slay me? That came about as Elijah said, I want you to go tell Ahab I'm here. It's time for us to talk. He said, oh, no, no, no. I Can I just put apples? I know how you believers work. I know how you prophets work. You show up in one spot, and then we turn around, and you're gone. God takes you somewhere else, and, and, and so, oh, no, no, no. I see the setup here, bub. I'm going to go tell Ahab that you're here. And then what's going to happen is he's going to say, well, let's go get him. Ahab was so ticked off that every place he said go find Elijah and they couldn't find him, he swore an oath against him. He was like, he's going to kill me. So, nope, I'm not playing this game of hide and seek with you. Thank you, but no thank you. Elijah says, I promise you I won't go anywhere. I'll stay right here. And so it is, we move then to verse number 13. Was it not told, my Lord, this is Obadiah trying to find favor. Was it not told, my Lord, what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord and how I hid a hundred men of the Lord's prophets by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water. And you tell me now to go show myself to Baal. You're trying to I'm, I'm paraphrasing, obviously. You're trying to get me killed. Verse 15, he promises that he'll stay there. Verse 16, he says, okay, so I'll do it. This is going to set up a showdown between Elijah and Obadiah. 
I'm going to read parts of this and speak to other parts of it. But before I do that, you've got to understand that this showdown was coming for a long time. Imagine being Elijah and always being hunted down, being the anointed one of God, having the favor of God upon you, having the voice of God in your ear, and always being hunted down. Not only, not only was there Ahab, there was that wicked woman that he was wed to, and always being hunted down by then. I know it was the Lord that sent him to Ahab, but I also feel like there was something, must have been something building in Elijah's spirit that says that's it. Enough is enough. It's time to figure this thing out once and for all. Let's see who in the world God is for. My God is going to reign or your God's going to reign, but I'm not living in a world where there's both on either side anymore. Let's bring this thing to a decision. Is there anybody in the building that knows how important it is to bring it ultimately to a decision. I need a little bit more of this. Yes, sir. Listen. See, this is why I had to move this back so I wouldn't fall down. Now, here's what I want you to do. Everybody just kind of start worshiping God for a few seconds. Let me just practice. Practice with me. Woo! Good. All right, if, if, if I fall down, I want you to do that. When I recover, I'll take a bow, do it again, and I'm going to keep preaching. But, but here's, here's who I'm talking to. I'm, I'm talking to that, that young person whose youth group has gone from hot to lukewarm to cold to hot to lukewarm to cold, and, and you've kind of grown okay with that. As a matter of fact, you pretty much can predict how it's going to go based on the conferences you have attended, and you're okay with that. What I'm saying is time to draw a line in the sand and get God to burn some of that indecisiveness out of your spirit. God did not design us to be up and down. He didn't say win some, lose some. Win some, lose some. He said victory to victory. He called you to be an overcomer. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I need somebody to stand with me. Just hold on. Oh, not everybody, not everybody, just not everybody. But if you've ever been called to an intense place of prayer so that you know that God can tap you on the shoulder for a moment like that. Now, now all of us have been in those moments. We might even have one tonight, probably will. But I'm asking, if you've ever been called to, to an intense moment of prayer, and maybe you were the only person or one of the only people in your church, but you got called to that intense moment of prayer, would you just stand with me all throughout the house? Just stand. If you've ever been just tapped on the shoulder by God and called to that moment. Yeah. 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 All right. Good, 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 good. Can, can I tell you that? Even how I just languaged it is wrong. I said you've been called to that moment. God is not building bonfires. This is not God is, when God tapped you on the shoulder, he, he wasn't trying to just celebrate fall and have a bonfire, something that would glow bright and then burn out. He was tapping you on the shoulder saying, I can trust you to dig into prayer and I want you to burn until you start burning things around you. I'm trying to tell you, no, don't, don't say five months from now, it'll happen again. And maybe ten months from now, it'll say, no, 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 no. It ought to burn in you like a fire shut up in your boat, and it ought not go out. Amen. Let me give you the proof. I was somewhere preaching a rally many, many years ago, a um, couple hours from here, and um, I did what I always do, same thing I always do, been doing it for years, God, what do you want me to say? Help me to say it. And um, 
that's it. What do you want to do? And I felt the Lord say to me, God, help me. This, this is an indictment. I, I felt the Lord say to me, I want to fill everybody who needs the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I want to fill every single one of them with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I answered back, God, do you realize in order for that to happen, I'm going to have to preach and fight all the religious apostolic people in the building. I was more discouraged about the saints than the devil. I didn't, I didn't even rebuke the devil. I didn't even rebuke him one time. I didn't even talk about the devil. I wasn't worried about the devil. Yeah. The, the devil believes. Yeah. The, the, the devil's under control. When God speaks, the devil just does whatever God tells him to do. Get out, get out of that man and get in the pigs. Okay, man. The, the, the devils aren't a challenge for God. No, they are not. You resist them. They'll flee from you. You draw nigh that God resists the devil, he'll flee from you. The devil is not your problem. Your religion is your problem. The devil ain't your problem all the time, but your traditions will kill you. And I don't have my glasses on, so there's a chance that there's one or two people in this building who was in that building. I don't know. But I walked into the prayer room that was in the basement of that church, and my friends gathered around me who were also youth pastors, and they said, what do you think is going to happen tonight? I said, God's going to fill souls with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And one of, look, one of them looked at me and said, I know I'm believing God to fill ten of them. What do you think about that? And I thought, well, <laughs> you're not the one preaching for one, but, but what do I think about that? Uh, why just ten? <laughs> let me tell you, let me, oh, God in heaven. See, I, I'm not poking fun. I'm just telling you what happened. And I wouldn't even give this scenario except for I'm trying to work through some stuff in this building. <laughs> here, here, here's what happened. Here, God, I don't think, I don't know if you can feel anybody at this meeting because you, you haven't filled anybody in our church in a while. But, but you know what? No, Lord, no, no, no. I'm going to work through that. God, you can. Lord, your word said you can. God, you can feel maybe one. Lord, there'll be one person here tonight. And that's, I'm, that one person, God, is going to give me faith that, that that you're still doing it, God. And, and then they're like, no, no, I can do better than that. It, matter of fact, God, I, 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 I believe you for five. And, and I, they, they don't work themselves up in talking God into doing less than what God wanted to do in the first place. Can you imagine talking God out of revival when God wants to give you revival? I said, what if God will fill them all with the baptism of the Holy Ghost? And they went silent. And I thought, I said, okay, I'm by myself. Can you boys just believe with me that God's going to do something? We got you. I said, I'm going to stand up there in front of that church and I'm going to tell them that God's going to fill every single person who wants the baptism of the Holy Ghost, who will repent of their sins. This ain't magic. No, you got to repent of your sins, homie. And can I tell you, you got to mean it. I don't mean because you're emotional and you feel bad in the moment. I mean because you drew a line in the sand and you said, God. The God of fire, show up, and I'm going to serve that God. And you had tears in your eyes because you were sorry for how you had lived. And so you got to repent and all. I told them all of that. And I said, I'm going to stand up and I'm going to tell them, would you just at least say amen? And they said, we're going to say amen as loud as we can. I thought that'll work. The whole time... I'm sitting over there, and I'm just uncomfortable. The music wasn't anointed. It was awkward. Was anybody in that meeting? <sighs> Good. Everybody playing music was my friends. They were my friends, my mentors, or my mentees. They were all people I love and, and, and hang out with. Some of them I hang out with to this day. These were not heathens. 
these were not unspiritual people. It's just on that day they were off. And so I'm sitting there. You, you talking about ruining service? I'm the, I'm the guest speaker. The music is not where it needs to be. And I don't mean they were off key. As a matter of fact, they were perfect. They were well rehearsed. It was right out of Dollywood or Branson or, or wherever you go. It was right out of there, right? And, 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 but it was off. There was no anointing. There was just talent. And I thought, God, you cannot do what you said you're going to do with just talent. I'm trying to tell you to draw the line. Either have church or stop lying that you had church. Oh, that's, see, that's it. I'm just going to bring it home. Listen, if nobody repented, you didn't have good church. If nobody got baptized, you didn't have good church. If nobody got the Holy Ghost, you didn't have good church. If nobody got delivered, healed, you did not have good church. You had a gathering. Yes, sir. So, so on the third, second, and third song, I thought, God in heaven, I'm going to kill the spirit and I'm going to ruin everything. I just got up, walked right to the podium grabbed a, hang, a mic that was dangling there, and I said, y'all, hold on, hold on, hold the music. Something ain't right here. Something ain't right here. And uh, I love everybody. I really love everybody. I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feeling, but I hear talent, but I can't feel anointing. And I know you all know how to tap into the anointing, I said. So why don't we take a few moments, I said, and why don't we just pray? And we took a few moments, and it was so awkward. I'm the only one up here praying. What am I doing? I'm fighting 300 religious people to get to a place where God can fill everybody with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Why, oh, God in heaven, don't turn, don't shut me down. I'm telling you, you got to draw a line. Call some fire down from heaven. And when it, if it comes down, serve that God. If you can get away with dull, boring, dry services with no anointing and you still get the fire, serve that God. But there ain't no fire there. Get rid of that mess. Find somebody who maybe can't sing, but they will pray and they will fast. Give them the microphone and get the anointing back in your music. I wish somebody would just make up your mind right now. No more, no more dead services. Come on, stop giving away November and December because of the holidays. Stop having those throwaway services. I don't think so. I don't think so. How dare you celebrate the birth of Jesus when it ain't even the right time of year, but then you don't even entertain Jesus. Draw a line in the sand. Oh, come on, lift your hands for just a few moments. Let this sink in, somebody. Father, touch every pastor in this house right now in the Holy Ghost. 
God, every, every pastor who is exhausted because they're, pre they're preaching in a house where there is no prayer and they're tired, God. Touch every pastor, God, and give them a little bit more want to, to keep preaching it. But God, touch the body of Christ. They're preaching too. God, like pastor said, God, we got to also have people that believe it. I think if you do this for a few moments longer, you're going to feel the fire falling. Somebody shout, Jesus. Come on, shout that name again, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Say it after me. Say, I'm not that tired. I will not give up. I will not surrender revival. No way. No how. Not now. Send the fire, God. Send the fire, God. Send the fire, God. Send the fire, God. Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name here we go here we go so thank God for a pastor or two you can be seated thank God for a pastor or two because in that service where I was one of the pastors got up, pastor put the hands in the air, started talking in tongues. Another pastor got up, put his hands in the air, started talking in tongues. Another pastor got up, put his hands in the air, started talking in tongues, and then the place started to come alive. This place, let me, let me tell you what happened. There was a reverse dynamic. I still shut the music down. They weren't doing anything until they could figure out anointing. And what here's what I learned. As the place began to come alive, instead of people up there waiting for people up here to sort of do the work and create the magic, this ain't magic. This is anointing. And there's a difference. I'm telling you, praise God for the crowd. Praise God if you got a choir. Praise God for the praise team. But you would have explosive service if you really got with them. And so, and so, you can be seated. It, the place started to erupt in all I can describe it as is anointing. Some people were talking in tongues. Some people were clapping. Some people were just doing a little jig in their seat. And it was building from the, from the pew. And it was making its way to the platform. And I think God honored that. And so then you could see it. It started on the keyboard. And the, and the person on the keyboard, he, he got his hands off of the ivories, put them in the air, talking in tongues. And then it's moving through. As a matter of fact, it was almost as if there was a song of sorts that wasn't musical. It was not at least the kind of music we're used to. It, they were not in harmony. It wasn't like that. There was no rhythm or beat to it exactly, but it was beautiful and it was heavenly. And before long, he did strike a chord and it was anointed. Yeah. Yeah. I preached. I preached a pathetic I preached a pathetic little message, can't remember what I said, and at the end of it, I looked back at all those youth pastors and I said, every one of them, every one of them. As a matter of fact, I made a commitment that if I go anywhere else from that day forward, I'm praying for everyone who's sick, everybody who needs the Holy Ghost. God filled them all with the baptism of the Holy Ghost in the book of Acts. Why do you accept anything less? 
I didn't say it direct enough. Stop quoting Acts chapter 2, verse 38, when you're not willing to believe God for Acts chapter 2, verse number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And if you can't believe God for Acts 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you can quote Acts 2, 38, but you will not get Acts 2, 39. So, I almost lost it. I'm almost, I'm almost, almost done. You can be seated. I almost lost it because I said, does anybody, I said, God's going to fill everybody in this building who wants the Holy Ghost with the Holy Ghost under these conditions that you truly repent. I went through repentance. I made them do it right. That, that you really want to live for God and do whatever the Bible tells you, commands you to do. I went through all of it, including holiness. That, that you really believe God can do this right now. Is there anybody in the building? Because God's going to fill all of you. There's about 300 people in that building that day. And, and I just waited. And tell me, tell you, that 15 seconds of silence felt like an eternity. It was all on the line. The mockers in the group, the mockers in the group were snickering. They had watched my sacrifice be slaughtered and laid out, and it was covered with water like Elijah's was, and they were snickering. They were going, there's no way, there's no way. But you know what? It, it was silent in the house, and I thought, I'm going to serve whichever God answers by fire tonight. Get in, get out. And so I stood there for 15 seconds, knowing there was a lot on the line. 15 seconds. And a boy, oh my, I shouldn't say this out loud. But, but you know, he, he just, he had a very unique face. And I, I just, I, I really, when he opened his mouth, I said, does anyone with the Holy Ghost? He said, I do. But the way his face looked, I heard Scooby Scooby Doo. And he had that, that same kind of face. And I almost lost it because I got carnal for like a few seconds. And I was like, did, did he just say Scooby Doo? <laughs> I thought, you count. Come on. <laughs> I was about to, 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 to pray Shaggy right on through to the Holy Ghost. <laughs> That's who he looked like. <laughs> He came, and I, I went through the same thing. Now, there are 300 people watching me. They're, they're, just, they're just watching me. I, I, I had so much discipline because I wanted to yell at them, this is not a show. This is not, this is not something else I believe. This is what I believe. This is not just some cute part of me. This is the primary part of me. I said, do you believe? He says, I believe. I said, I'm going to lay hands on you. And when I do, you fully repented. When I lay hands on you, God's going to feed with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Do you believe it? He says, I believe it. Lift your hands. As he lifted his hands, I said, if you're comfortable closing your eyes, close your eyes and just begin to talk to God. He lifted his hands. He closed his eyes. I don't know what he started saying, but I laid hands on him, and I prayed in Jesus' name. And about 30 seconds later, perfect tongues, fluent tongues, and I just took the microphone, and I didn't get it right in his mouth because he would have heard himself, and that would have startled him. I got it close enough like this that everybody else who could out there could hear it, and they heard him speaking in tongues, and you should have seen the eyes. The eyes were like, Whoa, it happened. She caught Tana Mosan Narata. She called Pastor, you keep preaching it. I don't care if they don't believe it right now. You keep preaching it. Young person, you keep saying we're going to have revival. I don't care if you don't have it tomorrow. You keep saying it. You keep claiming your miracle, your healing, your deliverance. You keep believing it. They watched Elijah too. And I said, I'm almost, almost, almost done. There was this little girl. I said, anybody else? This little girl, she was probably eight or nine years old. I said, come on, baby girl. 
I got way down on her level. I said, do you believe it? Here's what she did. She was like, he got it. I thought between me and you, good point. <laughs> so, so I was like, all right, do you know how this works? She says, I'm going to lift my hands. I'm going to believe God. If I repent it, you're going to lay hands on me. I'm going to get the Holy Ghost. I was like, praise God. You got it, you got it, you got it. In Jesus' name, I, I get to, I start leaning toward her. I'm not even sure we made contact before she starts speaking in tongues. <laughs> that was two. What if God gave you a victory for every testimony that I'm about to give you that you said amen to? What if you get two on Sunday? What if you get three? What if you get four? What if you, believe it, believe it. Believe it! and five and then 10 and then 15 and 18 people receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. There was, there was one kid, there was one kid that prayed. She was younger. Stay standing, I'm done. She was younger. And uh, musicians, come on. And uh, she, she said the same thing. Sweet kid. She went to the same thing. I got to lay hands on her. And she started with stammering lips. And her youth pastor started screaming from the other side of the room and ran over to where she was, shook her and said, you almost scared that baby to death. And she stopped praying. Or every person who wanted the Holy Ghost would have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost in that service. Every single one of them. The God that came down in fire, I decided to serve that God. So, so when you call on his name, you can expect him to show up. Here's what I want to tell you. Oh, God in heaven, y'all gonna get, don't get mad at me. Well, if you get mad at me, at least have the guts to tell me you're mad at me. We can duke it out and then be friends and get over with. If, if Netflix is bringing the fire you need, keep it. Go for it. Double down on your binge watching. Spend hours and hours doing that instead of praying if it's giving you the fire you need. But if you keep repenting of that garbage and going back to that garbage and repenting of that garbage and going back to that garbage, I'm going to ask you to bring it to the altar today and let the Lord fall with fire upon you and burn it out for good. We need to have a conference where everybody on three just delete that whole app you got. They gonna hate this. But if gossiping, spreading bad news, and being a busybody, if that's working for you, would you serve it? Matter of fact, would you get a blog? And would you make it famous, make a bunch of money, get rich, go on vacation, and be famous for being famous? But would you really just do it, or would you draw a line and get out of that life?
lifestyle. In the 90s, I was studying for a men's conference. My wife was sitting there with me. Our computer was like one of them computer screens that like, it was black with green writing, blinking. Our internet was like this. <laughs> You've got mail. What kind of news? I was studying for a men's conference and I was going to talk about men's stuff. And even in the 90s, the rate at which men inappropriately access stuff online was starting to be caught up quickly by women who were into all sorts of things online. If that temporary thrill is working for you. Well, well, you, you, who, who, you, you said preach it. If it's working for you, then go ahead and get it. Listen, phone the uh, uh, Larry Flint and all the others and go find, go find the porn star. Do it. Do it big. Do it big. But don't bring that garbage in the church calling yourself one of his. You bring your, you drag your carcass to an altar and you go, God, a fire, burn it out of me. Oh, I'm not done. Those are those are the kinds of sins that that they alert they they kind of they're out there and they call you and you go to them, but there are other things that you can harbor in your spirit that came to you. These are the offenses. <laughs> Look, anybody ever been offended by a brother, a sister, a brother and a sister? <laughs> if. If, if, if staying bitter is working for you, if finding the opportunity to say something negative about them in a key moment to sign up that, that will criticize them and cast shade on them, if that's working for you, would you just get online, do a live, and blast them out loud in their face? Would you do it all the way, or would you allow God to get it out of your spirit? I'm trying to tell you there is deliverance. I'm trying to tell you there is help. I'm trying to tell you you can be apostolic. <laughs> then prophets of Baal tried, and they jumped up and down on the altar, and nothing was happening, and they started cutting themselves, and nothing was happening. God in heaven, if I had more time, woo-wee. Elijah said, I want you to, let me, let me show you how it's done. He was not, he was not big headed or anything like that. He was coming off a great miracle in chapter 17 and he knew what God was able to do. He said, let me show you what happens when I call down fire from heaven. There is a God that will consume not just the sacrifice. When I got the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you should see my report card. As students who don't know what that is, that's when you go to school and you actually take the test, you show up, you get the grade, get, right? You should see it. It, it. it was flatlined. I got the Holy Ghost, it was like, it's alive. It's alive. I, I just said, I said, God, I just want you to feel with the Holy Ghost. He said, I'm going to do that and I'm going to give you some common sense to study. Overflow. Well, you, you say, God, 
I've got something I've been struggling with. It's a little bitterness or something like that. He comes in, he says, if you'll let me pull the fire on that, if you'll let me burn that thing, I will consume that, and then I'll consume the other stuff that's been feeding that. God, I'm not bitter anymore. I feel better about myself. I love people. I want to evangelize. Where did all that come from? God's going to fire because when you call my name, I show up. My God in heaven. Now, anybody in the building? Anybody still in the building? Here we go. Here we go. No matter what it is, you're a little discouraged. Listen. This is that, this is that bipolar. This is that dysthymia. It's that cyclothymia. It's all the ups and downs. Life brings its ups and downs. We all know that. But 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 you you as it brings us up and down, you keep coming to church. As it brings us up and down, you keep praying. You keep fasting. I'm not suggesting you to for one moment that life will stop bringing its ups and downs. That's called life. What I'm trying to say is if you're going up and down with it, God can burn that out of you. He can put you on a rock that's solid. That says if there's a 1,000 on my left, 10,000 on my right, I won't be turned by none of it. Anybody want something from the Lord? Anybody want something from the Lord? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray that same prayer, that same prayer that the prophet prayed over you. If you need something from the Lord, it's healing, deliverance, encouragement, encouragement, direction. If you need any of that, if you need any of that from the Lord, just make your way this direction. And it came to pass that the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near. God, encourage every pastor's wife right now. Encourage every pastor's kid right now. Encourage that person who's the only young person living for God in their family right now. And said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Achan, Jacob, Israel, let it be known this day that thou art a God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art Lord God, and thou hast turned their hearts back again. And the Bible says after that prayer, the fire from heaven fell down, and I pray in the name of Jesus right now, right now, that as we call all upon that name, Jesus, uh, Jesus, 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 uh, that something happens uh, in your spirit uh, that delivers you to the next level in the Holy Ghost. Something happens when I call your name. Something happens when I call your name. Something happens when I call your name.
make a little this is a deliverance zone right here just just give me a little space right here in the front pastor hellman just travail right there stay in that please stay thank you thank you for trail travailing give me a little bit more space up here no no he's good he's good i want him to travail right there listen no matter what it is sickness disease a wounded spirit that you're just sick and tired of carrying it. You want to be delivered. This doesn't mean you're living in sin, but maybe sin keeps knocking at your door and you can't just, you, you have not been able to shake it by yourself. But you want to, she told Mosa, right here, this spot right here. Come on, just get in this little spot right here. You, you who believe God, you who believe God, Shanarata. Shanarata la la mosa. Nikon la 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 mosa. Nikon la 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 mosa.
you link up with somebody right now all over this place everybody touching somebody come on right now we can get victory together victory is contagious come on come on right now let the holy ghost do what he wants to do come on you don't have to be intimidated you don't have to be scared come on these are the things of god
super powerful right now if you're praying with somebody and they're seeking the Holy Ghost do not stop praying keep praying if they're seeking the Holy Ghost keep praying if they're trying to get healed keep praying don't don't stop but for the rest of us we're gonna do something really really wonderful right now Joshua I need you up here this is from this is regeneration there may not be enough of us in the building, but if you're a little bit older, you got the you got faith and you got the Holy Ghost. There may be some young people here without parents, so you're gonna have to adopt them. But I want some of us who are a little older in the Lord to get a hold of some of those who are a little younger, and I want you just to worship with them. Uh, what we are are we trying to transfer something you better believe we're trying to transfer it That's right. you better believe we're trying to transfer it I want to look like my daddy I want my son to look like his daddy's daddy so would you find a young person and would you just worship with them
That's it. Come on, let the joy of the Lord come forth. Let the joy of the Lord come forth. Let the fire burn. doing but brother brother blash could not have been more on target with what god is doing in the spirit but there's one more thing we've got to do here tonight the lord spoke this to me i want i want all of our men of god our our pastors our preachers i would like for you to come and just line up across the front right here facing out all of you men of god come on Praise God, our pastors, our ministers, our evangelists, I want you to come and stand up. Come and help me, brethren. I need you right now. Amen. Now, what we're fixing to do, this is not a joke. This is serious. This is the whole reason for this conference. Amen. Pastor, Pastor Reeves, come on up and join us. Amen. In order for there to be a transfer from this generation to the generation that's standing before them. There has to be a transfer of the spirit that God put upon these men. I want you to look at some of these men, especially these elders. You're looking at men that have fought battles, have fought devils, have kept on going when there was no reason to keep going. In fact, the man that preached to you tonight has fought hell and high water just to get here to preach this to you. What I'm telling you is, you're not alone. You're not the first one to face that nasty devil. You're not the first one to face defeat and doubt and depression and all of those things that you're dealing with right now. You're looking at men tonight that have already been there and fought it and won. These are seasoned men of God. These are men of God that know what the battlefield is about. They've got scars on them from the battlefield. What I would like for us to do, if you're serious about a transfer, I felt that God told me directly, we need to do this tonight. I'd like for you to just form a line across through here, come in this direction. I want you to just walk by these men of God, and I want them to put their hand upon you as you walk by. We won't stall, but I just want you to go through like an old-fashioned prayer line, because here's what the Lord said. He told Moses, he said, Moses, I want you to call out some men out of the congregation. And he said, when I call them out, he said, I'm going to take of the spirit that's on you and I'm going to put it upon them. Brother A.G., I felt God speak this to me. He said, if you will have the men of God that are in that service stretch forth their hand, I'm going to transfer the same thing that won battles in their life 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. I'm going to transfer that spirit to this generation. Are you with me tonight, church? If you're serious now, it's not for everybody. If you're not serious about it, but if you are, I want you to get in a line right here. Just come by quickly and then move on and worship. But I, I want there to be something transfer. Amen. In the name of Jesus, let's lift up our hands and believe God. Something's fixing to happen right here. There's going to be a transfer of anointing. That's it. Just keep on moving. In Jesus' name, as these men of God touch you, God is going to do something in your life. Come on, you got to believe it tonight. Church, let's worship the Lord. Let the hands that have fought battles, let them touch you tonight. Let the faith that has defeated devils, let it speak to you tonight. That's it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God impart, impart to these people tonight. 
Let there be a transfer of the Spirit, a transfer of the Spirit of God. The victories that have been won, the battles that have been fought, the devils that have been overcome. That's it. Healing in Jesus' name. Deliverance in Jesus' name. Come on, you got to believe God tonight. Just like the man of God said, you got to believe God. Take the spirit of these elders. Take the spirit of these men of God and put it upon this generation, this 2021 generation. Let them have the same confidence, the same spirit, the same faith, the same power, the same determination to finish this race, to be what God has called them to be. transfer in the Holy Ghost. Let there be a transfer of the Spirit of God. The anointing of the Holy Ghost. Oh, right now, God, in Jesus' name. God, I want the Spirit of my fathers I want the spirit of my elders. I want the spirit of these seasoned men of God, these soldiers of the cross. I want their spirit. I want their double portion. I want what you put in them, God. I want it in my spirit tonight. I don't want it to die. I want it to live. I want it to thrive in me. and preachers' wives, young people, singles, college and career, married couples, uh, put it in us, God. We need a spirit that will match this generation. Hallelujah. I got the spirit of my fathers upon me. Woo! I'm going to face it with determination. I'm going to face it with fire. I'm going to face it with purpose. I'm going to face it with the mission of God upon my life. I will not back down. I will not be silent. I will not.